Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host Mundane, this video is part of my Gadgets series, and today we're going to be talking about the RetroTINK 2X. So I'm one of the people that was lucky enough to get a pre-order for the RetroTINK 2X, and I've had it for quite some time now. Um, I've had some, you know, good things to, to do with it, some things that I wasn't exactly happy with. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing is uh, what I'm going to call the most unfair comparison on YouTube for the RetroTINK 2X. Um, first of all, it was made by Mike Chi. Um, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but it's better than the $30 cheapies and stuff like that that are on Amazon and various other pages and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, this is the most unfair comparison out there. Uh, that's not to be negative. Um, I'll, I'll just get that out of the way. I'm not trying to be negative about the device or anything like that, but I'm, I'm trying to praise it for how well it can contend in an unfair fight. Um, mainly, I'm just going to be going through and comparing it to... Uh, you know, what natively a PlayStation 3 can do uh, and exactly how things are going with trying to use the retro tank and using the official uh, PlayStation component cables um, but you shouldn't be out here and just using that to scale it up and doing side-by-side -side side comparisons. There should be some going on in the screen somewhere uh, about now. But, you know, Yes, uh, it's it's really well done. It does everything as best as it can. Um, it does have some limitations. Uh, it can only handle up to 480p input. So any of the uh, high-scaling games like the uh, uh, PlayStation 2 games, there's a handful that will go past 480p. Uh, uh, there's a couple of original Xbox games that will go past 480p, but I, I don't have any of those, uh, or if I do, it's not enough of a concern for me. Uh, I do enjoy the device quite a bit. Uh, you know, this, this is an unfair fight. Uh, you can't... You can't really compare this to things like, um, you know, some of the high-end price devices, you know, uh, and, I mean, you, you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on this, and compared to that, these are really cheap, um, not, not as opposed to, like, build quality, but it's, you know, it, it's more economical solution, especially for any 240 or 480p content. Um, now, it does not truly convert. It does what it says. It, is it double, fine doubles? Um, so, any system that has uh, a non-standard input, uh, like the Nintendo, is not truly uh, a standard video format. Um, I believe... Uh, the Nintendo 64 also is the same way, if I'm remembering correctly. But there's our, there are a few consoles out there that are not a standard video format. Um, and that's fine. Uh, it's just some capture cards, like my Blackmagic, will not capture non-standard, no matter even if it is uh, line-doubled. It's still considered a non-standard video format. My Aver Media card will actually capture everything that's thrown at it, uh, even through the Retro Tank, which is how I'm able to record the things that I'm recording right now. Now I do have uh, a few concerns outside of the the uh, limited um, video ranges that it can handle. Um, it would have been really great if it had handled everything up to 1080i. Uh, but I think that would have increased the cost uh, to the point where it would have been outside of what its perceived market should have been. And and that's fine. But you know, I would like that. I, I would have loved to have the option for a VGA connector to go into it and stuff and just 
basically be a budget build to blow the uh, the OSTC, I believe, um, out of the water. But you know, it, it's it's kind of hard to to package everything all together for as many gamers and stuff. Uh, I will praise that it is absolutely the least amount of lag. Um, it does not it does not in, insert any perceivable lag whatsoever. On the other hand, if your television is processing it after the retro tank gets a hold of the signal, that's going to add lag, and it's not the retro tank's fault. Uh, but on with some of my concerns, uh, I have big hands and stuff, and fingers that don't get into crevices very well, and you know. The buttons on this thing are a little hard to reach, um, so changing between input and changing between smoothing and non-smoothing uh, and, and 2x and all, all the other options, uh, I have a hard problem with that. Um, I'm probably going to go through and create some sort of faceplate so that it's uh, the device is hidden and protected and just have those switches on a faceplate somewhere in my entertainment center. Um, but, yeah, the, the switches for me are kind of hard to reach. Um, I, I end up using a pen to actually get to them most of the time. I just like a, like a mechanical pencil or something like that. Um, the other thing is the, the only thing that's preventing the mechanical stress on the, on the connectors is the soldering joints. And I was really kind of hoping for something a little bit sturdier than that. Uh, especially for, for people that have multiple systems like me. Uh, stressing those connectors seems to be very easy, and I'm probably going to go through and either put on some sort of uh, small 2-inch extenders or something like that so that I'm not putting any stress on those connections on the retro tank. Um, and the last one was like a really odd thing. Uh, the every once in a while uh, I will get voltage errors from the HDMI on some devices. Now it's happened with my uh, my HDMI splitters and switchers and whatnot. And what happens is all three of the lights start blinking rapidly, and I can't get it to stop. I can't get it to output any video or anything like that. And the only way I was able to correct it was to unplug the HDMI cable from the device. Not the retro tank, but from the display device that I was trying to get the retro tank to display to. Be it my capture cards, or uh, the television, or anything like that. So, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but um, I think that it might be a, a voltage error coming from the HDMI cable into the retro tank. Or, or some sort of signal error. But it's easy enough to, to rectify by just simply unplugging the cable and plugging it back in. Uh, I found that power cycling it does not work. I found that uh, trying any of the different buttons in any combination in any way, shape, or form did not work. But I mean, those are the only issues. Um, would I suggest buying this product? Uh, if you are kind of on a budget like me, um, yes, then definitely buy this product. Support Mike Chi. He does a wonderful job. Um, very little lag. I'm, I'm very impressed with the product. Uh, if you are a video game perfectionist and need RGB and all of this other stuff, don't bother. Uh, get, get something else. Get something more high-end. And, you know, go for what you want uh, but like I said this is basically keeping a realistic uh, expectation you know is it going to make your Nintendo look as good as your PS3 or PS4 or anything like that no absolutely not um, is it going to make it look larger on a television um, yeah, if you have one-to-one -one and one-to-one -one, uh, pixel ratio and no scaling turned on inside of your television, it will make it a little bit larger. Um, you know, and it, it, it tries to eliminate as much lag as it can. 
Um, televisions insert lag, you know, no matter what. Um, so it's not going to magically solve all of the lag input lag problems, but it will go through and eliminate any input lag that is being injected by any of the uh, you know, earlier things like uh, that I've used, like uh, any of my scalers in converters or anything like that. Uh, so yes, eventually I am going to be changing out how I do things inside of my entertainment center. And this is going to be the main hub. Uh, just another side thing is it does not inject HDCP. So um, it does not inject any copy protection whatsoever, which is really, really great. That way people can uh, stream with their video game systems and stuff like that and not run into any issues, uh, you know, uh, just depending on like what capture card you're using. Like I said, uh, I've recently gotten a hold of an, av an older Avro Media uh, HDMI and analog capture card. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna keep using the Retro Team 2X to stream my older consoles, and I absolutely love it. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host Mundane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.